Well, good evening and welcome to About the Valley. And my guest tonight is Paul Winsky. And Paul is a familiar face in town if you get down to Linwood Mill. That's true. And he's the uh, runs the Blackstone Valley Education uh, no, I forget Foundation. The, Foundation. Yeah, perfect. Foundation. <laughs> Blackstone Valley Education Foundation. And I met Paul at the Blackstone Valley Expo, the Chamber uh, Exposition at Northbridge, at the Northbridge High School Fieldhouse. Mm -hmm. And we started talking. I said, I said Paul, you got to be on my show. It's, I don't think a lot of people know about your organization and what you're doing. I said, this would be something people would like to hear about. So that's why I want to do it, have you talk about it. Now, this, doesn't, this is not something just for not for school system. That's correct. No, when we talk Blackstone Valley, we're talking all the schools. We actually, Harry, we have um, 11 public school districts who are full members. Yep. And that's all the towns, all the schools from Millbury, Grafton, South to Uxbridge, Blackstone, Millville, Milford, everything in between. And including the Votech. And including very much so. They're one of the more active schools in it. We also have four additional affiliates this year who are working with us. Oh. And that includes the Auburn Public Schools, the Oxford Public Schools, Webster Public Schools, and Dudley Charlton Public Schools. Oh. And Bellingham is looking to, uh, to become more active with to us. To join in with your organization. Correct. Right. So it, that's quite a, quite a number of yes. <laughs> people in uh, yeah. school it's systems. A good chunk of the South Central um, yeah. map. Yes. Yes. So what do you do for them ex exactly? Well, our job is to connect the schools with businesses. Uh -huh. So we're trying to develop the 21st century workforce for the Blackstone yep. Valley, the state of Massachusetts, and basically across the country. Oh. So my board of directors, we had an executive board meeting this morning, is comprised of about 50% superintendents and principals from the schools and about 50% business and community leaders. Well, that's a good way to get them together. You have yes. them, you're both on the board. Everything we do involves both. So we look at both as equal partners. It should benefit the businesses who are involved. It should benefit the schools who are involved. I don't think people realize how important this is. Businesses will tell you all the time, it's hard finding people to fill slots that they have. That's correct. I mean, when you hear things like the skills gap, it's no joke here in the Blackstone Valley. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, a high concentration of manufacturers, as, as most of the um, viewers will, will recognize, and a disproportionate number of current workers will be retiring in the next 10 years. Yeah. They're in their 50s or early 60s, and they're skilled. Well, I don't think people realize that we have a lot of manufacturers because... They think of manufacturers like the white machine works, which no longer exists. But no, there's not a lot of big manufacturers. You don't have the General Motors anymore. Right. But you've got a lot of small manufacturers. A ton of them. And they're yeah. very, very high tech oriented. And, yes. and take the white and mill you were just discussing. Yes. We did a tour there with um, history teachers last year. We do a lot of professional development for teachers, so they oh. learn more about their subject matter and, and, and jobs available within, you know, the career for the students who like history or English or yep. science or math or whatever. And it was fascinating to be hearing from a couple of the CEOs who are based there now in the White Mill, yeah. one of whom is on our board, um, and, and that's um, uh, Omni Control Technology. And, 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 and when you're in this mill, which, as you know, was once the largest mill in the world. Yes. Producing all types of, of textiles and, 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 and things for, for decades. Yeah, well, the, the biggest textile machinery manufacturer in the world. Yes, think about that. Right, yeah. right here. This stuff is all over the world. And, and then Peter, the CEO, says, so we are in the same facility where they were doing this 150 years ago. <laughs> he said, you want to know what we're making, what we're doing right now? We're making parts for the next generation F-35 Air Force fighter mm. jet. Yeah, see, you know, a lot right. of people don't realize that this is being made right here right. in, in, in White and Zone, right. in the whole white machine work. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you know, it's been they, fascinating. They, to, to well, when they hear Omni this. Control, what the heck is that? You know, it doesn't really say what, the, what it is. But, I mean, you, you take a business like Omni Control, because people drive past that mill every day. They yeah. don't even know they're in there. Right. They got the contract for the state of New Jersey to replace 
all the communications for their train system after <laughs> Hurricane Sandy hit, <laughs> Superstorm Sandy. Yeah. That's being done right here. Yeah. See, a lot of people realize what, right. how, what's going on here. Right. Uh, Eastern Acoustics. Yes, same building. Yeah. Yeah. They provided all the sound systems for Disney World. Think about that. Right. Yeah. You always people would drive down or go down to Florida, visit Disney World. Well, you're hearing all that great music as you walk around. That's on the uh, Eastern acoustic right. speakers. And, and, and the other uh, manufacturer that was taking place in this particular program we do, because they're, they're very active with us, Access TCA, same building. Yes. They do some of the largest trade show displays in the country. And they got clients all over the world. It's being done right here. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I mean, I think part, one of the problems we got that we don't have any hotel space for these people that come in right. here. That's correct. Right. Because we we don't realize that we have worldwide manufacturers right here in town. Yes, and, and, and not far removed from town. I, I was at Waters Corporation. You know, there's another week. one. Yes. People don't realize Waters employs 6,200 people worldwide in 110 <laughs> companies countries they're operating, and they're based in Milford. Yeah. And they're a world leader a, in their field. A big company. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and these companies are very strong, too. It's not that yes. they, they look like they may, they may not survive another year. They're very strong. Yes. And like you say, leaders in their field. Yes. World leaders. I mean, they, yeah. these are global leaders. And yes. they've got a big need for technical people, people that can understand the manufacturing process today well i mean i, I grew up in clinton not yep. unlike whitensville you know right. a small old mill town from the 1800s oh, yeah. and the issue now is you still have parents and grandparents thinking when the kids are talking about careers that you're talking about these old dirty mills <laughs> and, and those are so far removed from reality when you walk into one of these places they're spotless clean yep all of the people understand technology and are using technology on a regular basis. I mean, and, and these are very high paying jobs. Even yes. coming directly out of high school into some. I mean, we have a lot of students who go through college and then return as engineers or marketing directors, but we also got students from the schools who are going directly into work. Right, right, doing the, the labor jobs that are yes. in there, but they're not, I call them labor jobs, but they're a lot more technically Highly involved in that. Yeah. It, it, it's not the old days of working in the, in the foundry. Right. And, and what we're learning is, as long as the, 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 the person, let's call him a young adult or a high school graduate, has an aptitude for learning something about technology, these businesses will train them. That they know they don't have experience coming out of school. Right. Well, where, where would you get it? Where would you get it? <laughs> but they got to be willing to learn. they yep. got to be willing to be a team player. they got to take some initiative. And... and, and they can do very well. And they can get a good job right here locally, yes. not having to travel all the way into Boston or the, on to the 128 belt. Yep. You're right here. Well, and, and, I mean, you've got a, a small manufacturer like Lamp Corporation in Uxbridge. Yes. You wouldn't even know sometimes that, you know, they're buried just, just off, you know, um, off the, the main road. And, and, and they're providing us, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year to turn back into grants for the schools because they got this strong commitment to developing more understanding of technology. In the I was going to get into that with you. How do you get funded by grants from these manufacturers? We get, uh, we get some state grants mm -hmm. from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and from um, Mass Development. And the schools pay membership dues, so there's a strong commitment on the school's uh -huh. part. And businesses provide um, money for us either through donations or sponsorship of our activities so that they can get their name out in the community. And it, it, frankly, when, when you take a lot of the small manufacturers that you mentioned that are around here, mm -hmm. the employees aren't commuting from Boston to those jobs. <laughs> no, they're not. They're commuting from Uxbridge yep. to Northbridge. They're commuting from Grafton to Northbridge. Right. They're commuting from Northbridge to Sutton. Yep. So they're coming from within 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, from, so the, from the school, they graduate from the schools that exactly. are in your, that are part of your group. So if you're the CEO, you want to go back to your employees and say, we're helping to fund the school you went to and the school your sons and daughters are now going to. Yeah. So the employees, you know, the employers like to yep. get their name out for that reason. Yeah, and, and things have changed in the, in the school education system. I mean, you've got some good background 
education with uh, Valley Tech as far as technical things go. Excellent. Yeah, fantastic job. Excellent. But Valley Tech is doing that. You're going to getting that in, in your high schools because they, they've gone away with They don't have the wood shops anymore. They don't have the uh, machine shops. Yeah, most don't. You're correct. So you really, you need to, you need someone to be able to train them when you get out into, the, when they go to work. Of course, they're not, machinists, you couldn't do machine shop anymore in a high school because it would be too costly for the equipment. Correct. Valley Tech can do it, but they specialize in that, and it's costly for them as well. And, and they have outstanding facilities. Oh, they, um, I know. I've toured it. Yeah, and we're, 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 we work very closely with them. The, yep. Their principal, uh, Anthony Steele, is the vice president of our board. We, we're, we're very active with mm -hmm. uh, BBT. Now, are you also involved with the chamber? Yes, we actually share office space with the Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce, and we've been sharing office space with them. Uh, I just finished my sixth year, but the two organizations have been together for over 20 years. And, and, and Jeannie Hebert, who's the president and CEO, is, is a close friend, colleague. Her office is right next door to mine. Jeannie's one of the biggest cheerleaders for the Blackstone Valley yes, that is. she could ever have. Yes. I mean, she is phenomenal. Yes. And what we found out is the two of us were born four days apart oh. the same <laughs> week. Oh, my. And all of our staff members are, 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 are multiple years younger than we are. Yes. So we just bore the hell out of them, Harry, with these baby boomer stories <laughs> and the old sitcoms <laughs> and the music from 1965. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I, get, I get into it, Jeannie, too. Oh, I yeah. know. Yeah. She's a yeah. big fan. Of, well, I do a 60s music show. Okay. So, yeah, we, we get into it big time. Oh, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, it's, 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 did, did, did your organization come about with the chamber? It was interesting. Uh, again, long before either she or I were, were, were part of the organizations, the the Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce had a standing committee on education. Uh -huh. When some of the old tech prep federal money for education became available in the 90s, in order to continue receiving it, the education had to split off as a separate independent nonprofit. Oh, okay. So we continued to share the office space. We have our own board. They have their own board. They have their own mission. We have our own mission. Right. But obviously we do a lot of things helping each other in collaboration. Right. Yeah, and you've got a, a quite a uh, thing going down there now with the uh, facility they're putting in where kids will be able to get training. That's correct. Yeah, the chamber, um, the, the education hub that Jeannie's been working on will be able to provide courses starting in the evenings, hopefully this fall, um, probably by Quinn Sigma Community College for retraining or advanced training of current workers in manufacturing. And uh, should that continue to go well, we hope that after a year, half a year or so, that uh, some day courses may start running where these uh, You'll high school get students... The, the, schools, the, yeah, the kids that don't get to go to Valley Tech Correct. would be able to come go down to the chamber, down to Linwood Mill, and actually take training similar to what they would get at Valley Tech. Uh, potentially correct. Yep. Right. And I know she's gotten in some great uh, 3D printers. and Yes, and, and she's been able to place some of that equipment in um, Uxbridge High School and Northbridge High School where they're going to run some satellite operations the first year. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yes. And this is training in the new manufacturing. Yes. I know, back when I was, you know, 18, 19 years old, manufacturing was a lot. You didn't, nothing was done with a computer. Right. They might have done some design work. No, I didn't do that. Right. I mean, not everything was by hand. You had draftsmen that drew up designs and engineers planned them out. But right. now you can take an average person, put them on a computer, and actually do what an engineer used to do. Right. And, 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 and you hit on one of the keys. I'm going to sound like I know a lot about what I'm talking about. I've learned all of this just in the last few years by, by interacting with the manufacturers. But the way small American manufacturers here in the Blackstone Valley are staying competitive because we're paying higher wages here than in other countries. Yes. But the way we're staying competitive is being more lean, being more efficient, and being closer to the client, the customer. Right. Which makes a big difference. So if you're running a machine, you're programming it. <laughs> you're not, you know, grinding out the oil here. Right. You're programming it, and you're probably the customer service representative to the client about the product you're making for them. Ah. It's because they've cut out a lot of the middle yep. management to stay lean. Right. So if I'm your customer in China or Mexico, 
and you're working on programming my product on your machine, you're the one I'm calling, <laughs> not the boss. Yep. And we're discussing how the production is going. Which also is a benefit because now you're talking right to the person that yes. built it. But that's why what we hear more than anything else from the HR managers, the human resource managers, the person needs soft skills. We'll yep. teach them the technology. We'll teach them the programming. They got to know how to interact with people. They got to know how to communicate in writing. They got to know how to communicate verbally, because there's going to be a lot of people interaction. They got to know how to work on the team with the others, because mm -hmm. there's a lot involved in that right now. So it's these soft skills that we're trying to yeah, have the high school students. You know, learn. that's a good point. I, I think because of social media today, and the way kids, they don't interact like they used to. That's correct. So almost getting a point that the school's going to have to train them. It's a tough challenge, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you think about it, because yeah, maybe they, could, they can uh, text. Yep. But they don't know how to, how, when, you, when you meet a kid today, they don't look you in the eye and talk to you. That's right. Because they're, not, they're used to looking down. <laughs> and you can't text, in, you can't use text language in a business email to a client. No, you can't. You've got, you've got to be able to communicate. Yes. And, and so they'll understand what you're talking about. Yes. And I don't think they, they, that skill, and it's got to be tough for the schools to teach that. Well, the skills are, I mean, the students are, 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 are challenged in the schools, but, but the, the schools have a lot. Yeah, it's quite, quite a off. task. Oh, sure it is. Absolutely. I mean, they only got them for six months of the year. Absolutely. And they got to do that in, in a matter of what, four hours and five hours a day? It's, it's not well, what we do to, to try to help, the, the schools are our partners. So we'll do a lot of um, bus trips of groups of students to businesses. Ah. That's often in the fall. Yep. But often in the winter and spring, we're taking the teachers and the guidance counselors and the principals to the businesses for the day, not the students. So they can see yes. firsthand with the business, here's what we need. They here's can the ask the questions. Here's the problems we're having yes. with the kids that are coming out yes. of here. Yes, they can hear what the needs are. Yep. Uh, we do, it, we, we've tripled the professional development we're doing because we found out how valuable it was to the schools. And the businesses love it because they love being able to interact with the teachers where they know that something that's being discussed is potentially going back to the classroom. Well, you know, uh, they talk about, well, manufacturing has, has started to come back. Yes. And it, it, there's been an increase in the last couple of years in manufacturing in this country. But I was uh, reading an article how someone said, well, geez, you know, real estate is, is really booming. In fact, there's been some houses out toward the Boston area selling for a million dollars again. And they said, the real estate agents are saying, we're not concerned with this dropping again. And one of the reasons is that there's more skilled workers in the Northeast than in other parts of the country. Yes. And this could be part of the reason is the way, what you're doing yourself in your, in your organization. Well, I mean, we're in a state that is consistently ranked first with the public education system. Consistently ranked first. Yep. So we're clearly ahead of the, 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 the group as far as our education system. And we've got a commitment to develop the knowledge about the current economy. Mm -hmm. And the baker Polito administration, with whom we've been working relatively closely, Lieutenant Governor Polito has been a big help, and, and this year... Um, she, she's been a phenomenal asset to Central Mass. To Central Mass, correct. And, and, and uh, we had uh, Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, uh, Rosalind Acosta, at our, at our forum last month. Oh. Um, oh. But I knew we were off on the right start with this, when within the first month of the new administration, they created the super cabinet, which includes the Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, and the Secretary of Education. Now, I've interacted with the Secretary of Education now on, on multiple occasions. And the reason for bringing these three together, think about the three, yeah. is the realization at the strategic level that if the schools and the businesses aren't doing this together with workforce development, it's not going to happen. Exactly. And, and, and so there's a strong push yep. statewide now for what we're doing. Well, you may, you may look at it as the schools are a factory producing the workers that these businesses are going to need. So yes. what these businesses are doing is they're the, they're the uh, customer saying, look, at this is what we need. Manufacture that. 
Y yes, that's correct. And, and if you didn't have this organization, if you didn't have a ch way of communicating these things, they would, the schools wouldn't know, and the business wouldn't be getting what they need. Clueless, both ways. Yeah. Now, and it's not just the students going directly into the workforce. Lenza Corporation, they are right at the junction of Route 16 and 146 in Uxbridge. Yes. You can't even see them. They're set back. You can see the sign. I see the sign, yeah. Just before you get on 146 South that you're coming from Douglas. Yep. International company. There <laughs> you go. They're American operations based in Uxbridge. Yeah. Owned by a German conglomerate, right? At that Uxbridge facility alone, I forget how many hundred employees they have, but they have 60 engineers. Wow. So we did a session for teachers there last October where they had a whole panel of engineers from all different types of engineering, back and forth discussion <laughs> about what your students need for careers in engineering after you yep. know, if they enter college, a and the type of person they should be, not just they got to take calculus too, but what type of right. person makes a good engineer. Yeah, yeah here again, you, you have to have certain people skills to be an Absolutely. engineer too. Absolutely. You could have good communication skills. Yeah, these engineers are actually very comical. They were funny. Yeah. Now. Then, um, oh, it was probably uh, January, February, Consigli Construction. Yeah. Now, they're one of the largest construction entities in New England. Yes. They're based in Milford. Yeah. They did the same thing for us. We brought 40 teachers, guidance counselors, and principals there for a full academic day that was awe-inspiring as to some of the stuff that Consigli has done. I mean, starting with this large building in Boston where they literally – took out 16 floors from the middle of the building. <laughs> it was fascinating projects. Two where they received several awards. They rebuilt the Sandy Hook School that they took down after the shooting. Oh, yeah. And it was a stunning video they had put together about how they had to involve the community members, the parents of some of the kids who were shot that day on the building of the new school. I mean, you've got these things happening in our community and, and, and people don't realize the impact of some of our employers. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, we don't realize the stuff that's going on around right, right. And you know the thing is, too, Paul, for the security of our nation, you need these. You need this manufacturing. You need these engineers. Yes. I mean, the technology that we always got to be, our technology in, in, in defense alone has to keep getting better. You have to come up with new yes. ideas all the time. We've got to be cutting edge. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's, it's CNBC this morning. There are more people, but there are more jobs than there are unemployed people in the country right now. We just that's the that. other thing, yes, right. yes. It's a skills gap. Right now, if you want a job, there's one out there. Yes. And we're not see and it's not, it's not flipping hamburgers. No, right, that's correct. In fact, those jobs are disappearing. I don't know if you saw it. McDonald's is going to do a thousand locations a, a year with the new kiosks. The new, right. Where you go in and you, you do your own order. You, you build your own burger, yeah, right? Yeah. And you zap it off. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, you're not going to be able to go to McDonald's and get a hamburger flipping job. Well, right. But there's going to be better jobs. Yes. And jobs that you'd be interested in going to. I mean, what? What could be more exciting to be able to go in and knowing that you're building these, like, parts for an F-35? I mean, in Whitensville. Yeah. I the mean, most advanced fighter in the world. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I remember way back in uh, probably 1966, I worked at Fenwall for a little while. It was nights, so I couldn't handle it. <laughs> yep. I was a young man. I didn't want to work nights. Yep. But I made uh, a thermostat part. We assembled the thermostat part for these space capsules. And I thought, wow, isn't that cool? This thing's going to go up in space that I'm working on. You know, Think about it, right? Yeah. Space is a big thing at that time. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And so here again, you know, we don't realize what you, what you could be involved with in some of these little manufacturers that are here. Well, I, I happen to order a lot of Yankee candles. I like Yankee candles. Yep. So we're visiting AGS, Atlas Global Solutions, Atlas Box, they used to be called, right on 146. And yes. Sutton. And sure enough, coming off the belt, they're all the container packaging products for Yankee Candles that they had just <laughs> delivered to my house the day before. <laughs> they got this large contract with Yankee Candle being made right here. There's a guy, that's, that's quite a story, the guy owns Yankee Candle. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
he started making candles. He started by making a candle for his mother. Yep. It worked out so well. He started making them for people in the neighborhood and selling them. And now the guy yeah, got it's a, a massive operation. Massive Probably operation. Probably the largest, right? Yeah. But we're also. I was watching. Um, again, I think it was CNBC, but I had also read the article in the Wall Street Journal about the um, the, the, the the little robots. They're not much bigger than this. Uh, they're on the floor yes. that run the Amazon warehouses all yeah, over the yeah. world. If you see a, a, a film of it, right. they're zipping all over they're the place. They're all over the right. That they run the, the warehouses completely. We're in AGS Atlas in Sutton, and there were two of them on the ground that they're <laughs> playing with because they built the crates to ship them to the oh. Amazon warehouses <laughs> right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's another a big manufacturer. They've grown tremendously. They, they've like doubled in the past three years since we've yeah. been working with them. And just making packaging. Right, but they do it really, really well. Yes, and yeah. that's the key. You know, uh, jobs can stay in America. Don't tell me, well, they can make it cheaper overseas. Yeah, they can, but can they make it better? Th that's the issue. Yes. And th th there's no CEO or purchasing manager in, in, a, in a large corporation, especially with high-tech equipment, who's going to always go to the low bidder. They right. can't afford to. The right. The product's got to be high quality. It can't not be. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to find, yeah, China's going to make, they'll make the junk. Sure. The, I always, mean, yeah. You're, you're in my age group, you're boomers. Yep. Remember when, when Japan was the one that made the yes. junk? Yes. Well, Japan outgrew that. Yes. So now it's China or India. You're always going to have that. Yes. And that's what those, those jobs are going to be. Yes. I mean, one time, you, well, you had a toy manufacturer in this country was huge, was uh, Marx Toys. They made the metal toys. They made, the, you know, like, the little garages. and. Jeez, I think I do remember that name. Yeah. 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 Well, they were, they were out of business. Yeah. Because they couldn't compete with the, with the, with the Chinese manufacturers. But... You still got, you have important things. I mean, look at the cars today, technology and, and just in an automobile. Right. Well, that stuff's going to be made perfectly. Yes. And China's going to start building cars. They want to start send, per, sending cars here. But the parts are being made here. Right. Because right. they can't manufacture them as well. Right. If you're flying at Mach 2 or Mach 3 in a jet fighter, the part better work. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, other than the fact that I remember an astronaut—I forget what, who it was—but back in went back in the Mercury, uh, the Mercury, the Mercury uh, Seven, huh? Seven, yeah, those days, the Mercury yeah. uh, series. He said, "I'm sitting on top of a rocket built by the lowest bidder." Think about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they still got to meet quality. Yes. And and they still you know and they got proximity. Yes. That's a big thing. I mean. If, if, if I'm a, a local manufacturing CEO with, you know, 30 or 40 employees in one of our towns around here, and you're my client in Metro West, yeah. and you find out, you call me, you need something by Tuesday, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, exactly. And we can get it to you. Yeah. You can't call Mexico and expect that. No. no so the proximity not. is a plus. You'll, you'll pay for the proximity. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but here again. You gotta have the people. You gotta have right. the employees that can do it. Right. And so that's now I see where your organization comes in. Well, when we when I go into a business, if you're the CEO of, of a let's say a manufacturer that we're dealing with, when I go into the business, I'm not going in with my hand out saying, "Can you help our schools?" Right. I'm going in saying, "Here's how our schools can help you." Yes. Now we should talk. Yep. And and, and they understand that. Yeah. So you, you don't get too much rejection. No. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm trying to think as I'm processing this. I'm not sure we've ever had rejection on that. No, once they hear the situation, I mean, right. these, these people are manufacturers. They're not stupid people. Right. And they know opportunity when they see it. Yes. That's how, where they, how they got where they are. Yes. So they, when, you, when you come in and you offer something like that, this well, well, yeah, this is because long term, they're looking, I, I've got a force that's going to retire one of these days. I've got to replace them. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to get them mm -hmm. from? Especially with the 3.8 percent uh, unemployment rate, especially which yeah, we now we haven't seen in decades. I mean, yeah. I've seen for you know several more decades. Yeah, yeah. And and a good part of that is because manufacturing has increased. Yes, it's become more efficient too. Yes, I mean just because 
there aren't as many workers at a particular local business does not mean they're not doing two to three times the volume that they were doing 10 years ago. Well, that's, that's where computers come in. Yes. They've been able to increase volume, and by increasing volume, you increase profits because your cost goes down when you can produce more. Yes. At the same price. But someone still has to run the computer. But someone's got to do it. And that's where it yeah. comes to. So you find that most of these people now are looking for people that, that know how to operate computers. Uh, I'm going to answer the question the way you asked it. They don't necessarily need to know how to. they got to have some feeling for technology and wanting to learn how to. Right. But, I mean, like, you wouldn't hire me. Yeah. I have no technology skills whatsoever, and I would put you out of business real quickly. <laughs> But if this person over here doesn't quite know how to run your machine, but they've, they've got a feel for hands and technology, they'll train them. Well, we're finding today now, I mean, the kids start, they start in the kindergarten with, with, with computers. Right. With laptops. So, I mean, well, they, they're, they're toddlers for crying out loud, and they're using <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been out in restaurants with the wife, and you see a kid watching a screen yeah. on, on their phone. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, got their little I, iPad, their kids' iPad. Yeah, called, yeah, right? they got their own. Right, they got right. their own. Right, right. And I'm talking kids that are just starting to talk. Right. So I mean, it it becomes a part of them. It's just, you know, we'd have to say that we grew up. We knew how to. We knew how to operate a television because we grew up with the TV. It was a lot easier than Harry. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, right. 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 But <laughs> you weren't afraid of it. Right. Now, I'll give you a good example. My grandmother, who came here from Poland, my paternal grandmother, they didn't have electric lights in her house, in the farmhouse, until my uncles came back from World War II and they had electricity put in. Wow. She would never turn the light on. She thought the devil was in it. <laughs> and my, my, what I'm trying to show is that people that didn't grow, didn't, weren't into truth to the technology, yes. were afraid of it. Yes. And we find that with, with a lot of boomers don't want to operate computers. They're afraid of it. Yes. I'll screw up. I'll screw something up. Yes. One thing I learned years ago was don't worry about what you do. You never heard it. But there are people who are afraid that, oh, I'll break something. I'll do. But these kids, they're not afraid at all. But the issue goes back to what you said about 15 minutes ago. It's not the technology for them. It's the teaching them the communication skills because they're doing less one-on-one, -on -one, yep. one-on-three interaction than we used to. Yes. So that's why it's not, we know they're going to know how to work this machine. Right, because they grew up with them. we got to teach them more in the interactive communication. And, it, and that's, where, that's where the computers are a problem, too, because yes, now... they're a hindrance. Yeah, they're actually learning from that computer. They, they, they're interacting with that laptop and not interacting with other people. Right. I mean, I was talking to something about that, how... You don't see as many, the Little League here is very active, but you don't see it as much. You don't see as many, you don't see the, the pickup ball games like you used to when right. we were kids. We all had neighborhood playgrounds you walked to. Yeah. That's not the case You were anymore. busy all day. Right, right. There's right. hardly anybody on the playground here during the day. Right. And that's because these kids come home and they go on a computer. Mm -hmm. And they're doing social media or whatever they're doing on a computer. Mm -hmm. They're not getting out there and interact, interacting with one another. And that's one of the skills that you, you learned growing up. Yes. It, it, I, would, I would say the skill they're learning with the technology by sitting in their room and doing it is also a plus, but now it created another minus. Right. It's not like one's better than the other, but there's a deficiency now that needs to be developed, and that's yep. the soft skills. And now that's what the schools are working on. Yeah, and that's what the businesses are really looking for. What they're looking for and what the schools are trying to give them. Yes. We, we, we did a professional development session in conjunction with Holy Cross College uh, last spring. Uh, we did it with English teachers and Holy Cross did a tremendous job. They had their uh, placement director, they had um, uh, their communications person, they had their uh, marketing person talking to English teachers about the different careers students who like English can go into. It's not just teach. Right. In fact, teach never even came up. It was all the other careers. But the, um, the manager of placement for Holy Cross had a national survey um, from, from businesses that had just been completed and a lot of the colleges had bought into it. The first four skills that CEOs were looking for, the first four, it listed ten, 
had nothing to do with technology. <laughs> Every single one was communications. Every single one of the top wow. four. It was writing, it was uh, anal analyzing, it was um, ability to, 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 to verbally get points across. And, and, and that's what the businesses are lacking. That's what they need. Well, that's a message to the kids. When, yes. you know, when, when, you, when your English teacher says you need to write this composition. There's a reason. Yeah. You think, well, what do I need to do that for? Right. Well, you're writing that composition on whatever subject they picked out to see what your communication skills are. Yes. Not to learn about that subject, right? but to see if you can, you can... I spent most of my career in college admissions and college financial aid. I've still got colleagues in the college admissions offices who are getting their essays for admission in text language. <laughs> oh. They can't believe it. Oh, my God. Yeah, because the student just thinks it's how you communicate professionally. What do they do in a case like that? Do they well, they, 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 I mean, I, I'm not going to say they automatically reject the student, but it's a huge negative in the review process. They don't ask them to try it again? or They had the same chance as everyone else to produce it the yep. first time. Same instructions. Yeah. See, well, that's something if any, anybody's watching here, we've got the graduation class coming up. Right. You know, you guys are going to be starting, if you, you're looking to get into college, Keep in mind, you better know how to communicate. Well, the interesting thing, if we can just go off tangent yeah. a little bit here. The interesting thing about the admissions process, I, I've done workshops for tens of thousands of parents. That's not an exaggeration. Hundreds of high schools. And, and one of the fundamental things I tell them when we're talking about the competitiveness of, of the admissions process is, this is a very important point for a parent. Students apply to colleges where most of the other applicants have the same grades and SAT test scores that they have. It's natural. Yeah. If you're an A student, you're talking to your guidance counselor to come up with a list of colleges that accept A students. Right. If I'm a C student, I'm having the same conversation with my guidance counselor. We're coming yep. up with a list of colleges that will accept C students. Well, he's probably telling you to go to a junior college. It could be. Yep. So you gravitate to schools where the applicants have the same grades you do, right. strong or weak. Yep. So the college has to make a decision on whether or not to accept you on things that go well beyond your grades and test scores because everyone they're looking at are roughly the same. Yeah. So these extra things can really throw it against them. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I know, uh, yeah, you know, the, the GPA does have an effect, I mean, but... It's probably the most important. But then again, they're looking at a lot of other things for yes. acceptance. Yes. You know, I was talking to someone about Valley Tech, and somebody said, well, Valley Tech only take they don't take the top students. Yeah, they take some of the top students, but that's not all the people they're taking. They, they, they try to keep it mixed. Yeah, Valley Tech does a great job with a, a great group of students. And they're not only looking at your GPA to get in there. Correct. They're looking at your social skills. And Absolutely. Yeah. It's like going to co colleges. You know, people... You might have a you, you could have a perfect attendance record throughout school all all twelve years, and have a great GPA, but they're looking at were you involved in sports? Were you involved in uh, extracurricular activities and clubs? They want an, an all-round person. Well, they they want someone who's going to have something to contribute. Yes. To the college. Yes. They're looking for and, and, and uh, again uh, there are a lot of myths and I mean, we could do a whole show on college admissions someday if you want. Right. But, you know, one of the myths is that students need to join a whole bunch of activities. Those days are gone. Yeah. If I'm the dean of admissions, I used to be a dean of admissions. If I'm the dean of admissions, I'm not going to sit there in the interview with you and say, tell me about everything you've been involved in at Northbridge High School. No. I'm going to say, tell me about one thing you were involved in. How did you make a difference? Yeah. How did you have an impact? So they're looking not for the joiner. They're looking for the one who gets into something and makes a difference. Remember my uh, my oldest son went to Cornell. Great school. Yeah, he's a physician now. But when he applied to Cornell, <laughs> I remember him saying to me, "They asked me, what are you going to do for Cornell?" That, that 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 that's what they're looking for. Yeah, that was one of the things the oh, admission yeah. officer asked them. That's what they're looking for. That's exactly right. And yeah, because they wa they wanted an all-round person. Think about it this way. that They want an all-round freshman class at a competitive yep. college like Cornell, yes. Ivy League. So they want not a homogeneous group where everybody's just well-rounded. 
They want a group where everyone's bringing something different to the table. Yes. So you're the musician, and yep. you grew up on a farm in Idaho. Right. I'm the techie, and I grew up in the suburbs of Boston. Yep. And our other roommate is from Kenya. Yes. And their experience is completely different than yours, completely different than mine. You put yep. the three of us together, and now you've got a learning environment. Going right. On. Different perspectives, different yes. backgrounds, different yes. passions. Right. Yes. Yeah. I saw that in the in the kids that he was he absolutely at Cornell were, were in his dorm. God, that's way out there though. I went there once. <laughs> How is that out there? What a beautiful city. Yes, yeah. Ithaca, but yeah, yeah. To get there is to nothing. There there's is nothing not in easy. between. Right, right, <laughs> right. In, in fact, the back roads going in. Yeah, I, I thought we were in prime country. I mean, just way oh, yeah. out. Oh yeah. Well, you are. It can't possibly be a university out here. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. When you get there, it's just, of right. course, you got Ithaca College right there, right. too. Right, Yeah, it's quite the place. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, anyway, this is good, that what you're doing then. Now, th this was a good thing that came about. Is this happening in other places? Or? No, we're very unique in the state. That's one of the things that has grabbed the interest of, you know, people within the administration and within the Department of Education. So they're looking to set something up like this again in uh, other places or try to. They're really interested. They're looking at us as almost like an incubator. You yep. know, we're, we're, we're because, I mean, you've got cities, Boston, Worcester. You know, Worcester's got seven or eight high schools. Boston's yeah. got 30 or 40. Um, but they're the same school district. Right. I've got 16 high schools from 16 different school districts. That's a unique situation. Yeah. So the, the and, and you started you, out as Blackstone Valley, but now you're bringing in Auburn and Oxford. Yeah, we're bringing in, in some of the contingent communities because yeah. they're, they're hearing about us. They're hearing, and they right. want to get in on it. Right. And, and rightfully so, because they want to have a chance to get their students to get sure. good occupational skills and right. to get out there and get in, get in the workforce. Right. See. That's the other thing, too. I mean, we're finding, finally waking up to the fact that not every kid has to go to college. That's correct. And you can have a good job for, the, for all your life. Very good. And not have to go to college. Not just a job, a good career. Good career. Right. Yeah. And when you think about it, if you do go to college, well, today, now, we're talking, we're talking a ton of money. Yes. Even I mean, for state school. Yes. So even I mean, if it's Cornell right now has got to be approaching uh, three hundred thousand for four years. Oh, right. Even with my son, when I'm, I just paid it off. <laughs> <laughs> That's I paid it. I, I told him I'd pay hundred percent, and I did. Yep. But it, it was, you know, it was, it, it was big bucks. Right. And we're not, and we're talk, not just talking your dorm fees and you know your, your housing. And we're talking just the tuition alone is a, is enormous. So you you hope to get a return on that. Yes. So not all kids are going to get a return. So maybe they ought to look at... Well, the, if, you, um, if you talk to the people um, who work on labor statistics, you know, whether it be with the state or with the Workforce Investment Boards regionally or, or with the U.S. Department of Labor, they will tell you that the biggest growth areas for the next 10 years are the, the two-year type college. Yes. In other words, it, you need something after high school. You don't yep. necessarily need the four-year, um, but the fastest growth will be in the roughly two-year of education beyond high school. Yeah, the, this the, the, is the technician type technology. This is why Quincy is growing so fast. Quincy right? booming. We were just there two weeks ago for a yep. program. We brought eighty students up there. It's affordable. Yes, very. When you compare it to a four-year college. Yep. And you can get some great skills out of there. And they got great transfer programs. When you come out of Quincy, two-year degree, yep. you're guaranteed admission to UMass Amherst or any of the state system. Yeah. Um, you can transfer to WPI into the engineering program. I mean, yep. you know, Quincy's done a really nice job. Yeah, and you're taking credits with you, so you're yes. not going to spend as much at, at, right. at a WPI or, or at uh, UMass. Right. Because you already got some credits. Right. Yeah, so you... But I mean, but still, it's a great pr program to go into that. I mean, like the law enforcement program, they go to Quincy, they take the law enforcement course. Well, they're they're almost ready now to go on a police force, mm -hmm. or even the, I think they do a firefighting course now. I don't know. But uh, I know they do public safety. Yes. So there's a lot of different things, but it's a good way to get into it. If you want to go into law, but you don't want to be a lawyer, you can go in there and take some law courses that. Help you become a, a para, paralegal. Yes. Well, uh, I'm going to go back to something. I'm, I'm listening to every word you say. But well, when you, you spoke earlier about English, 
Yes. Do you know that the number one recommended college major for those wishing to be lawyers, it's English. It's not history, it's not political science, it's not government, it's English. So they should major in English. They should major in English. That's the number one, far and away, that's the preference of law deans. Well, here again, right. what's the number one thing an attorney has to be able to do? Communicate. Communicate. Yeah. Be it in court or with your client. Lots of writing, too. Well, yeah. yeah. You yeah. have to great writing skills. Right. right. But people don't assume that. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go political science because I want to be a lawyer. Well, there's nothing wrong with political science, but... Well, I think the they English. go political science because most politicians are lawyers. Well, that's true. <laughs> right. But I think most politicians are lawyers because they find an easy way of making money. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing about a lawyer, you know, doctors are limited because not everybody gets into medical school and they limit how many people. Right. But... Law schools, you've got so many law schools now, and they, anybody can go to law school as long as you can get in there. Then you pass the bar exam. We're overloaded with, with attorneys. Especially in the Northeast. Yeah, we're overloaded yeah. with them. Right. So you know, when you get an abundance of one particular skill, you're not going to make a lot of money. Right. It, it, it's tough to start out. And, and, and yep. the, the, the issue with um, young lawyers, uh, which is a great career if that's what someone oh, yes. wants, but the issue is that they're probably – Start, unless they're coming out from a real top tier law school, that's a whole different ball game. Well, yeah, then, then you're guaranteed a job right. at a big you law know, firm. Big firm, and it'll take care of you. But lawyers are starting out, you know, to, to try to make money, relatively low earnings the first few years. Yeah. Yet they have the debt almost equivalent to what a physician has. Yes. Yeah. So you've got that mismatch yeah. there. You know, oh, low yeah. earnings to start and get established, yeah. but big debt. Yeah, right. and, and not a lot of demand. Especially here in the Northeast. Yeah. New York and Boston are saturated. See, my son went to medical school, and he, right now he, he's well. Right now he's working for Fallon, but he's leaving there, going to work uh, in Gardner for uh, Haywood Wakefield. Yeah. At their clinic in Winchester. Well, the reason he's doing that, they offered to pay half his medical bills. Oh, that's a huge his, his, his benefit medical now school that, loan. That, that the businesses are looking at. And, yeah. and the, in, in, in medical field especially. Plus give them uh, even more money. Yes. But he says, well, I'm, I'm going to, I said, well, you know, he lives in Chelmsford. I said, well, Sean, you're going you're gonna to have to travel now to Winchington. Right now he goes from Chelmsford to Lowell because he runs the clinic in Lowell. Okay. I said, big difference on a commute. Yes. He says, yeah, but, Dad, they're going to pick up half of my what I owe in my medical school. Haywood Medical Center has grown quite a bit in the past yes. 20 years. Yes, yes. But I see, they, they can't find, but the reason they're doing that, they can't find any family practice medicine is almost impossible to find. He's, he's licensed in family practice and uh, geriatrics, which is what they're looking for. Right. But like I said, with the lawyers, hell, I can find them all over the place. Right. They're, they're all saturation of it. Yeah. So but, but, yeah, yeah, again, I, I don't want to keep quoting the Wall Street Journal, but um, yesterday, you know, the, the economy, they say, can't grow much more because we don't have the employees to hire we need for the growth. To, yes. I mean, you can't grow your company if you can't hire more employees <laughs> We to need hands-on right. skill people. And we've hit almost, you know, a stone wall here because yeah. of the lack of additional skills. Yeah. I mean, every, not everybody can go into, uh, what you might sales or, yeah. or, or you know, administrative. Mm -hmm. You've you got to have the guy that's in there doing the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And here's a, I know machinists, you know, at one time, machinists was an easy, was a, you could almost, there wasn't a lot of machinist jobs around, and they didn't pay that great. Now, these machines that they have today are so technical, they don't have anybody trained to run them. Right. And it would be, when I say entry level, I don't mean necessarily it's your first day in on the job, but right. within the first year or two, maybe not even two, within the first six months to a year, you can easily be in the fifty, sixty thousand range. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, that that's pretty darn good from right. you know coming right out of school. That beats retail by a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so many kids. I mean, I see college kids, kids with four year degrees that end up in retail. Y yes. Because there's nothing else. Yes. And because they don't want to, they, they got to look at these manufacturing jobs. We gotta, I think we, we started getting away from that. I think people started thinking that there's nothing out there. And boy, are they wrong. Right. 
I mean, you were correct again earlier. We're not going to have General Motors come back into the Blackstone Valley. No, but you got a but lot we've of. We've got dozens of these small high yeah. tech firms that are growing yeah. up. Yeah. And, you know, it's, some of them do disappear because they get absorbed by bigger companies. Yes. But then again, there's someone else out there replacing them. Right. And manufacturing today, I know uh, Henry Ford. Did went, you know him? I didn't know. I know, I know of him. I'm <laughs> not quite that old. But he came up with the concept that he wanted to make everything that it took to go into his car. So he manufactured everything. You know, he put, the, he put together a glass manufacturing company. He put together uh, everything, yep. whatever it took to make a car. That's going away from that now. The manu car manufacturers now aren't doing that like they used right. to. Now they're subbing it out. Right. So that's where these little manufacturers come into, into play. Yes. And that's why they're coming you're back. exactly right. It's the subcontracting. Yeah. And their specialty. Yeah, the big manufacturers yes. aren't doing that anymore. Right. Because it's not efficient. Right. It's not, it's not cost efficient. It's, it's not efficient if, if they have a strike, they're out of luck. Yep. Whereas if they go to the little guys, <laughs> you can still get my supplies. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. Um, one of the more fascinating books I've read recently, I do a lot of history uh, reading, Arsenal of Democracy. And it was about, you know, the, the buildup in 39, 40, 41 yes. of the war. Yes. And... Uh, Henry Ford um, was balking at, at getting involved with the government and changing over his facility. And his son, Etzel, was in communication with, with the White House. And at, at one point, F. Franklin Roosevelt got so frustrated, he, he picked up the phone, he called Etzel and says, your dad's got till Saturday to sign this contract or I will take full control of the Ford Motor Company. <laughs> he signed it. They built the big uh, Willow River plant which was the largest facility in the world. It ran for almost a mile and a half under one roof. Yes. And in those days, they did it just the way you said. Yeah. They took the B-24s that used to take three weeks to make for the war and got it down to 63 minutes. <laughs> the assembly line would start, and 63 minutes later, this plane would roll out of the factory. Yeah, ready to fly. Because everything was done, just like you said, right yep. there. Yes. Right. That's not the case Everything anymore. was manufactured Everything there. was right there. Yep. Yep. They don't do that anymore. No. They got away from that. Yeah. Of course, transportation has gotten better, and you're able to get stuff shipped right. quicker. So logistics have changed. You don't need to do that anymore. Right. right. And it, it, that's why people ought to, you have to wake up and realize that there's a lot of great opportunities out there. Yeah. It's a great opportunity to start for a startup company. Oh, sure. The entrepreneur is very much uh, in demand. Yeah. You know, with potential. I mean, it's a high risk. Right. I mean, you come up with the ideas, and you can put it together. The financing is out there. Yep. That's the other thing that's changed a lot, too, now. we have The venture capital. Venture capital companies have come about. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't have that 50, 60 years ago. Right. Never heard the term. No. Yeah. If you had to go to a bank, yep. and after they put you through the grind, they might give you something. Yeah. And hopefully you could pay it back. Now with venture capital companies, they're actually part of your company. Right. And get you going, right? And it made it. That's why you see people like Home Depot come into existence. Mm -hmm. Staples it was from venture capital companies that say, "Yeah, this guy's got a good idea." I think like someone like Ken Langone, right? He yeah, Home Depot. Yeah, that, that, that's how we got to right? be. I mean, he didn't have a billion dollars sitting in right. his bank account. He does now. Now he does. Yeah, <laughs> now he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's yeah. just a, But these are the things kids, people are going to learn today that are going into the job for us. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not what it was. It's not like yesterday. Well, I mean, if I could say something to your viewers. I mean, yes, it, absolutely, because we're getting, running out of time now. It, it, if, um, if there are some businesses out there that, you know, are concerned about their, um, their, their future workforce locally or do want to get, you know, more involved with the schools and the community to develop a feeder system, um, you know, we're the ones to contact. I mean, that, that's, our, that's why we exist in the yeah. Blackstone Valley. And they can get a hold of you right down at the Linwood Mill. Yes, uh, and you're in the, you, well, I'm going to say in the phone book. There's no phone books anymore. <laughs> yeah. no, just uh, Blackstone Valley Education Foundation. Just go and on just the web. Google it. Learn Google. about us. Yep. How to contact us. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, great having you here, Paul. And yeah, thanks, I have Harry. to go out at 755 because we have to give a buffer for in between the shows. Well, thanks for the invite. Tonight. Yeah. Hey, great, great conversation. Yes, that went quickly. Yeah, didn't it? As you promised. Yes. Yes. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Thanks okay. very much.
we will see you next week. My guest next week is Jen Casey, the uh, governor's counselor.